coming up. He was an emerging superstar whose promising career started to enter its peak when he made a decision to quit the business altogether to spend time with his wife and newborn son. But a fatal moment would tragically change it all. At that point, after years of futility, he became a hit parade. He marched off five consecutive top 40 singles, including one song that he buried on his new album that shot to the top of the charts after it was used in an ABC movie of the week. The song would prove to be a beautiful but enduring omen. The story of a timeless song and a timeless career is coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember trading wacky packages, baseball cards, tops, Fleer, Donners, whatever, or garbage pill kids. You're gonna dig this channel of musical nostalgia. Take the time machine every day. We invite you to be a part of it. Subscribe below, hit the red button, click the bell. Uh, again, take a time machine to the good old days. Also check us out on Patreon. So it's time for another edition of our series, The New Standards. This is a show that takes an in-depth look into songs that transcend genre, decade, and fads. Songs that are monumental touchstones in our culture and within our society. Today's song is a heart-wrenching hit that make those who hear it take some stock in their lives. It's created by a singer-songwriter who left us far too soon. At approximately 4 a.m. on September 21st of 1973, Ingrid Croce uh, was awakened by a phone call from her mother-in-law. The call interrupted a, a portentous, fitful dream where Ingrid was having trouble making contact with her husband. Uh, he was away from home on a long road tour. Uh, Ingrid's mother-in-law began the conversation with a question. Uh, are you awake? To which Ingrid replied, yes, I was just having a disturbing dream about not being able to reach Jim. Incredibly, the dream proved to be a premonition for what Ingrid's mother-in-law was about to tell her. There was a plane crash, and Jim, along with five other passengers on board, did not survive. The bulletin about the crash was, it was devastating to Ingrid. Uh, to her mother-in-law, Flora, and to the rest of the Croce family. It was also a heartbreaking tragedy for Croce's multitude of fans that had you know, been captivated by his talent across the world. So amazingly, a few months before his untimely death, Jim Croce actually sent a letter to Ingrid uh, that he made a liberating decision. Once the Life and Times tour was over, he was going to get off the road for good, permanently. He was going to quit the music business and find a way to earn a living that would not take him away from his wife and Adrian James, his infant son. For his next chapter, Jim wanted to write you know, short stories and movie scripts and step away from the public spotlight. For Jim Croce, the thought of missing out on those precious moments of life with his family, they've been festering in his heart and soul ever since Ingrid gave him the exciting news in early 71 that after five years of trying, she was pregnant with her first child. Uh, Ingrid recalled that when she told Jim that she was pregnant after a visit with a fertility specialist, uh, Jim was both overjoyed and terrified. I'm sure many watching this can relate. I certainly can. Uh, I wanted to be a father for a really long time. You know, my wife and I experienced many miscarriages before we had our first child together. Uh, man, I, I was so overjoyed. I've never been able to fully express that moment. Uh, when I held my son in my arms for the first time. It's just something that you can't describe, the, the fear and, and, and the, the excitement of, all of a sudden you just forget yourself. You don't even care anymore. It's all about this little, this little baby, this little child. I mean, the worries that we all face as new parents, it, it's, it's a very real thing. And you know, Jim Croce was no different. The singer-songwriter poured his mix of emotions about becoming a parent into an introspective treasure that he called Time in a Bottle. If I could save time in a bottle. The subject matter captured in Time in a Bottle it was deeply personal for Jim. Uh, but when the song was recorded into a track for his third album, 
It was never intended to be a single. The fate of the song seemed to be destined to be an inconsequential eighth cut on the track listing for You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Maybe it was just too personal. Uh, but the legacy of the song it made a dramatic change of course when it was selected to be on the soundtrack for the ABC movie of the week called She Lives. She lives! Remember it! It's there for you to see! It's when the TV audience heard the song's beautiful sentiment uh, about finding the joy of true love and the fleeting nature of time, there was an immediate emotional connection and attachment. The first thing I'd like to do. Croce's record label, they made a really smart move and they quickly pressed copies of Time in a Bottle for radio airplay. And the single blew up. It shot to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for two weeks in late December 1973. And it instantly re-energized sales for You Don't Mess Around With Jim. When Time in a Bottle began to take off on the radio, Don't Mess Around With Jim surged to the top of the Billboard album chart for five weeks in early 74. And it lived on the top 200 album chart for a remarkable 93 weeks. Earlier in 1973, Croce hit superstar and with his huge smash, Bad Bad Leroy Brown. Uh, that was his first number one single. Later, just a day before his death, the title track to his new album, I Got a Name, that was dropped. I've got a name, I've got a name. Unlike every other Jim Croce single, I Got a Name was not written by the singer, but the, uh, the Norman Gimbel lyric, I carry it with me like my daddy did, that resonated with Jim Croce because it reminded him of his own father. Jim's father too had a dream for his son, but he died before witnessing his son's enormous success. And I carry it with me like my daddy did. The moment that I got a name peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, ABC Records shifted their promotional focus on Time in a Bottle. Very smart. Uh, producers Terry Cashman and Tommy West, they had worked tirelessly on the front lines for Jim Croce. They worked on Time in a Bottle just as they had worked on every other Jim Croce track. And when the phone call came from the TV executive, David Wolper, about the desire to use Time in a Bottle as a pivotal music piece in She Lives uh, that actually starred heartthrob Desi Arnaz Jr., they were initially opposed to it. Cashman and West business partner, Phil Kermit, explained that the duo didn't like the idea of resurrecting an older Croce song. Uh, but Wolper's passion, it won them over. West was a radio announcer at WRLB in New Jersey. Teaming up with Cashman, a former Major League Baseball player for the Detroit Tigers as a songwriter for ABC Records. Cashman had quite a background before this, and I'm going to get into that. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I always wear. Right now, with spring in the air, you can get Zenny pastels. Uh, great new colors that are, are modern and stylish. They add color to your eyewear wardrobe, if you will. Get them for 80% off regular retail prices by clicking on the info button right up here. We'll set you up. So Terry Cashman, he was quite prolific. He co-wrote the lyrics of the song, Sunday Will Never Be The Same. That was a number nine hit for Spanky and the Gang in 67, if you remember. In 72, Cashman and West made the U.S. pop survey with American City Suite. That peaked at number 27 on the Billboard Hot 100. Do, 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 sweet city song. Do, 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 do. When American City Suite broke the top 40, the duo were producing Jim Croce and trying to get him a record deal at that moment. When they first began to demo Jim's songs, like You Don't Miss Around With Jim and Operator, uh, ABC Records and our executives, they didn't like the material. But after Terry and Tommy scored with American City Suite, uh, the label made an about face and they actually just signed Croce there on the spot. Cashman's love for baseball was put to vinyl on the song Willie Mickey and the Duke, Talking Baseball. Uh, it was actually a novelty hit on Easy Listening Radio in 1981. So the TV movie, She Lives, that the song was in, 
Uh, that was a, a movie about a young woman dying of cancer. Uh, the lead character was played by Susan Hubley. So the movie producers behind this searched high and low just for the right song to use for the theme of She Lives. And these producers went to a nearby record store and they bought a stack of contemporary albums. You know, they were looking for the ideal track for this movie. And that's when they heard Time in a Bottle. And right when they heard it, they knew they had found perfection. So after the broadcast of She Lives with Time in a Bottle is, you know, one of the memorable takeaways. ABC network affiliates across America were inundated with calls from viewers. Everybody was asking where they could buy Time in a Bottle. They wanted this, this song. This is a way just to spend them with you. And eight days after that, Jim Croce had just finished a concert at Northwestern Louisiana University in Natchitoches, uh, Louisiana. And uh, there was a private charter that was waiting for Croce and his band and his crew, you know, to fly him to their next gig that was in Austin College in Sherman, Texas, about 70 miles away. So the takeoff of the Beechcraft E-18S was aborted and uh, the aircraft slammed into a tree. All the passengers aboard were killed. This included Jim Croce and his longtime guitarist and collaborator, uh, Maury Mulison. Uh, the other victims were the pilot, Robert Elliott, a comedian, George Stevens, uh, artist manager and booking agent, Ken Cortese, and Jim's tour manager, Dennis Past. Uh, Croce was just 30 years old, with endless possibilities for the future of his career, or simply enjoying the, the pleasures of fatherhood with his wife, Ingrid, and their son, AJ the people that Jim wanted to go through time with. An investigation by the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, that led to the conclusion that the crash was caused by the pilot's failure to see the obstruction due to physical impairment. And because of fog, it reduced his vision. Apparently the 57-year-old pilot Robert Elliott suffered from coronary artery disease and ran three miles from a motel to the airport to make the flight on time. Even though Elliot was a veteran pilot with more than 14,000 hours of flying, uh, he wasn't in any condition to fly a plane at that time. Uh, the physical strain, exacerbated by his uh, weak heart, that led to a series of disoriented decisions by Elliot, the worst of which was his decision to do a, a downwind takeoff into a black hole of complete darkness, you know, that limited his use of any visual referencers. The tragedy took the, the life of a bona fide superstar who used his blue collar work ethic to, to grind it out over 12 years before he achieved his breakout success. You know, during his years as a struggling musician, taking whatever job that he could find to, to make ends meet, he did a lot of things. He was a bartender, he was a truck driver, he was a construction worker. This was part of his realist charm. You know, that made Jim Croce such a magnetic personality. He made music that spoke to all of us as an every man, relatable and personal. Following Croce's demise, Time in a Bottle has grown into a definitive track, forever related to the pain of mortality in the wake of tragedy. The tender narrative of Time in a Bottle was accentuated by its gorgeous musical arrangement manifesting the, the proficiency of the Croce uh, Mulison ensemble. Croce's rhythm guitar strumming in harmony with Mulison's uh, lead guitar licks created a heartwarming melancholy. Would be empty except for the memory of how. And then there was that touch of improvisational magic that perhaps elevated time in a bottle to an emotional apex. Terry Cashman happened to notice a harpsichord just lying around in the corner of the, uh, the recording studio. And the team came up with the brilliant idea to add the classical instrument to the arrangement. Tommy West would play the harpsichord and it was a fantastic touch that really romanticized the sonorous elegance of time in a bottle. If the sands of time falling in an hourglass could make a sound, I imagine it would sound something like the strumming of a harpsichord. Reflective, vulnerable, transformative. Ingrid Croce has lovingly dedicated her life to preserving the memory of her husband. For many years, Ingrid ran a restaurant in San Diego called Croce's, 
She made a cookbook entitled Time in a Bottle, Memories and Recipes. In pop culture, Time in a Bottle was placed in the elevator scene in Hangover 2 in 2001 and in X-Men Days of Future Past in 2014. Just to spend them with you. Are you guys seriously this calm? If I could make days last forever. 2016, the tracks were featured in the commercial for the iPhone 6, where Cookie Monster uses the hands-free Surrey function uh, to set a timer for the cookies he's baking and to play his waiting playlist. Does anybody remember watching Maureen McCormick, uh, grown up Marsha Brady, singing Time in a Bottle on the Brady Bunch Hour? I do. <laughs> Words could make wishes come true. And the music business, uh, the Croce family name has been carried on by AJ Croce, from the womb where the inspiration of Time in a Bottle was conceived to a grown man that has established his own identity as an artist. After creating his own original music, AJ began to honor his dad's legacy by performing his music in his live shows. For a long time, however, the ominous background of Time in a Bottle, that actually frightened AJ and he wouldn't play it. Now eventually, he taught himself how to play the song and he added it to his set. Be enough time to do the things you wanna do once you find them. I mean, when one listens to Time in a Bottle, it's hard not to be contemplative sometimes on the verge of tears. I mean, this song packs an emotional wallop, and the tragedy of the author's death, it hits even harder. You can't help but ask yourself some really tough questions. What am I doing with my life? Am I truly happy? Is it all worth it? If I could save time in a bottle, what is the first thing that I'd like to do? First thing that I'd like to do Shortly before his death, Jim Croce had answered those internal questions. He was ready to take action. Jim's time in a bottle, it gives us the inspiration not only to ask those questions, but to come up with honest answers that can improve our lives and the lives of those that we love. I mean, this song, it presents a restorative belief in experiencing the elation of true love and faith in the journey that we travel through to, to find the one you wanna go through time with. Since there never seems to be enough time to do the things that we wanna do once we find them, don't take time for granted. Um, I cherish every moment, you know, that I was able to spend with my dad before he passed away. And every day I regret any time that I lost due to work or other commitments where I could have been with him. So now this song, it's a daily reminder to me, my own kids, my own wife, to experience every moment I can with them. Because before too long, my kids will be out of the house. They'll be onto their own lives. At the time, it's a precious commodity. Maybe the most precious of all. This song, again, is a reminder to follow the immortal words of Jim Croce. Save every day till eternity passes away and spend every day like a treasure before time goes away. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Jim Croce and this elegant masterpiece, Time in a Bottle. What do you remember about this song? What do you think of with this song? What does it mean to you? Let's have a great discussion below. What do you think about Jim Croce? If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.